Hi guys, I'm Allison and I'm part of the Protocase Designer team. Today I'm going to review how to perform a few different actions within the Face Editor. So in other tutorials, we've already gone over how to use basic shapes and custom shapes to make cutouts. So today we're going to expand on those principles, but instead of making cutouts, we're going to use those shapes to mask, exclude, and make constructs. Before we get started, I'm going to need to create an enclosure. So I'm going to select a rack mount template from the Start menu and I'm going to make it traffic blue. So next I need to select a face on the rack mount enclosure to edit. Okay, let's start with masking. You can use masking to prevent an area from being painted. Our production team here at Protocase will mark the area with a special green film before it's painted to make sure no paint is applied in that specific area. This is most often useful for making a bare spot for an electrical ground. So in order to mask, you'll need to be in masking mode. Protocase Designer automatically defaults to cutout mode, so you'll just need to click on masking on the left-hand side of your screen. Once this is selected, you're in masking mode. So now you can create a shape for the area that you want masked. Put another way, this is the area where you don't want any paint applied. The shape commonly used for masking is a rectangle. I'm going to select rectangle under create, draw, and I'm going to create my masking area. A masked area will show up as a green pattern in the face editor. Now that I'm finished creating my masked area, let's say I want to make the shape a little smaller than I originally thought. Once I switch from rectangle to move item, I can resize it by either dragging on one of the corners or I can also change the width and height on the right hand side. So you can use masking on any metal, but one thing to remember, when you use masking on cold rolled steel, the bare metal will rust. Protocase Designer will give you a warning if you try to do that. And if rusting doesn't matter to you, you can click OK. But if rust is an issue, you can switch the type of metal you're using in the Enclosure Properties menu. OK, so I'm going to click the green check mark to accept my changes. Now that I'm in the 3D editor, I can see the area that I've masked because it's a gray area as opposed to my blue enclosure. Let's move on to excluding. The exclusion object type is used to mark areas where other objects can't be added. The only objects that exclusion zones will allow to be added are text and graphics. So exclusion zones are really useful for when you're adding a cutout. And if you want to ensure that nothing can be added to the design, that would interfere with the component that will be fitted into that cutout, like a switch. If you want to see some specific applications of this technique, you should check out our tutorials on creating double D cutouts and as well key slot cutouts. So we're going to select a face of the rack mount to edit. I'm going to add a couple JD series key lock switches and then create an exclusion zone around it. Okay, now I've placed my two switches. I'm going to press Escape to leave cutout mode. And now I'm going to create my exclusion zones. So from here I need to click on Exclusion, then select the shape I want my exclusion to take. I'm going to use a circle shape. Once you've placed your exclusion zone, you can change the size if you need to, either using your cursor or on the right-hand side. Okay, when I click the check mark to accept my changes, I can now see my cutouts. One thing to note though, you will not see your exclusion zones while in the 3D model view. Okay, lastly, let's review constructs. So the construct object is used to add a design or another reference to another part of your design. Think of it as kind of a placeholder object. So for instance, you could use it to mark a spot where you want other objects to be arranged or to align objects. And another way you could use construct is to make a design annotation, either for yourself, a colleague, or our own engineering team for when they process your design. Constructs never affect production, so you're never going to see a construct on the final manufactured product that we build for you. So let's go over how to make a construct. 
In this example, I'm going to create a construct that will represent the location of where my company's barcode label will be placed on the right side of the enclosure. I don't want to make an exclusion zone or do any masking, so a construct makes the most sense. I'm going to click Edit Face and select the right side of my rack mount. All right, now I'm back in Face Editor mode. For the mode, I need to select Construct. And for my shape, I'm going to select a rectangle. I'm going to draw a rectangle in the general area where I want to place the label. Similar to other types of objects in the Face Editor, I can now change the position of the construct as well as its size. In this example, I want the barcode label to be an accurate representation of what it will look like when I actually place it in real life. So I'm going to change the width to 1.75 inches and the height to 1.15 inches. And for its position, I want the label to be 0.5 inches from the bottom of the enclosure. So I'm going to change the Y origin to 0.5. So now that I have the construct in the place where I wanted it to be, I'm also going to add an annotation. At the bottom of the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a section labeled My Notes. So you can click on the green New button to add an annotation. I'm just going to write a quick note so that I can remember what the construct is used for. Barcode Label. One thing to note, I'll only be able to view this note if I place my cursor on the construct itself and highlighted it. In order to view all of my notes, I need to accept my changes and then go back to the 3D model view. From here, I'm going to click on View at the top menu and then select View Notes. And here is where I can see all the notes I've created. So let's say now that I've placed my construct there, I also want to place a fan cutout on the same side of the enclosure. You'll notice that I can technically place a fan in the same spot where I placed my construct before. This is because a construct doesn't prevent another object from being placed on it, unlike an exclusion zone. So regardless, I'm going to place my fan cutout a few ways away from the construct so it doesn't interfere with the label that I'm going to put on it eventually. I'll click the green check mark to accept my changes. And now that we're back in the 3D model, if we look at the right side of the enclosure, I can see the fan cutout that I've placed, but not the construct. The construct is only available within the face editor itself. Okay, this concludes today's tutorial. I hope you have a better understanding of how masking, exclusion, and construct object types work and how they can be useful for when you're designing. If you have any questions or ideas for other tutorials you'd like to see, please just email us at info at protocasedesigner.com. Thanks for watching.